All right then gang, so we saw in the last lesson that we can make these different layers for selectors and that the order of the layers matters. It determines the priority of selectors, whereby selectors inside layers that are defined lower down in the style sheet have priority over those inside layers defined above them. So then, if you're making multiple different layers in your style sheet, it makes sense to define the layers that you want to have the lowest priority near the top and define the layers that you want to have the highest priority near the bottom. And it might be that you structure your CSS in such a way that you have many different layers that stack on top of each other. So you could think of your style sheet as like a stack of these different layers all sitting on top of one another, with the highest layer in the stack being the most broad, generic, least priority styles on your website, like maybe a bunch of reset styles to reset things like margin, padding, text decoration, and all that jazz. And then the lowest layer, being the most atomic, pinpoint, and highest priority styles on your website. For example, utility classes, like a rounded class for border radius. In between those, you might have a layer for your site theme, which contains different color variables, dark mode colors, and light mode colors, all that kind of stuff. You might have a layout layer for layout styles to dictate how your content is laid out on a page. You might have a content layer for styles that dictate how your page content and typography looks, things like headings, other text and images inside articles and pages. And you could also have a components layer, for things like cards, buttons, models, etc. Now it might be that you don't have them exactly in this order, and it might be that you have maybe more or less layers or totally different layers completely. That's entirely your choice. This is just an example of different layers, which I consider to be low to high priority going down the stack. Because if I made a style for links in the content layer, for example, which made all links red and not underlined. And then I also made a utility class called underline to apply a text decoration of underline to elements with that class. I'd want the utility class to override the content layer one for whatever link might use it. So that's why it's further down in the stack, right? So let's try making a few different layers in our style sheet now to see how I might structure this in a real application. All right, so I've deleted the two layers that we created in the last lesson because we're gonna start from scratch. And you can see these are all the styles that currently make up our style sheet. And I've just put little comments above each types of styles. So we have some very basic reset ones right there. In a real site, this would be much more extensive. We have some basic theme colors right here. We have some layout styles for things like a container, the nav, uh, links in the nav, articles, grid system. Then we have some content styles. So this would be things like text within articles, things like that. So we've got all these different tags right here, A, H1, H2, P, etc. Then anchor tags within the main content articles, P tags, H2 in articles, footer in the article, etc. Uh, we have components, so things like a card or a button. Then we have some utility classes at the bottom, so rounded for border radius, underline for text decoration, underline, margin top and center. So this is just some very basic examples of different types of styles we might have on a website. And what we're gonna do is put these in their own layers now. So we're gonna have, and these are in order by the way, a utility one at the bottom, because they're the most kind of pinpoint um, high priority classes that we want. Then above that, we're gonna have components. Then we're gonna have content above that. Then we're gonna have the layout styles. Above that, we're gonna have theme colors and then a reset at the very top because that is the lowest priority, right? So let's create all these layers. I'm gonna to come to the top and I'm gonna say at a layer. And the first one is gonna be called reset like so. And then what I'm gonna do is just grab these styles and I'm gonna paste them inside this reset layer. So that means that all of these now outside here are in the kind of global scope of the CSS. And if there's any conflicts, they're just gonna completely override any of these. Now, the thing is we're gonna put all these in their own layers as well. So it would just be then if something down here conflicts with something up here, the layer that appears lower down has priority, okay? So then let's get rid of that comment. Let's do another layer. So at layer, this one is gonna be for the theme. So we'll call it theme. And then inside here, we'll just put in the theme colors like so. And then we'll get rid of this comment. We'll do a layer for the layout. So at layer layout like so. And make sure you add on your at sign. Inside here, we'll paste all the layout styles. Let's grab all those and delete the comment. 
and we'll paste those inside here like so. All right, so now we need a content layer for all the content styles. So let's grab all of these like so and paste them in here and we will delete the content comment. All right, so now we need one for components. So at layer components, and inside there, we need to grab all of these, just two of them in fact, and then paste them in here, get rid of this. And then finally, we need one for utility classes. So layer utility, and then we shall grab all of these and paste them inside this layer. All right, cool. So now we have all of these different layers, this layer being least priority, uh, sorry, being the highest priority because it's at the bottom. And then this layer at the top being the least priority, the reset ones. Okay, so if there are any kind of conflicts, then the ones at the bottom in this layer or this layer, they're going to win over ones up here. Does that make sense? All right, so this is all working as it should, hunky dory. And that's because I've structured my layers in such a way that all the stuff with the highest priority should be at the bottom, which it is, and the lowest priority stuff is at the top. So this is all working. But watch what happens if we grab one of these layers, for example, components where we have the button class. Let's grab that and I'm going to paste it somewhere near the top. So just below reset. And we can see now that the button up here isn't styled correctly because we don't have white text. The button here isn't. The buttons down here aren't. So this isn't working anymore because the order of the layers is incorrect. And we have now styles down here overriding these styles. Okay, so we've seen now that the order matters, right, of these different layers. We have the lowest priority at the top and the highest priority at the bottom. Now, a style sheet this short is pretty easy to navigate, and we can see those layers quite easily in order. However, when you're working with loads and loads of different selectors, then it's not very easy to see the order of these different layers, or even what layers there are. You'd have to scroll through and look for layers down the entire style sheet, right? And also, if you wanted to insert new layers, then it might be difficult to see where you want to insert them in the order. Because again, you have to kind of scroll through everything to see. So what we can do then is define our layer order at the very top of a style sheet, first of all. And then that will determine the order of the layers for the entire style sheet. And then it doesn't matter where we place those layers in the rest of the style sheet. For example, the theme could go right at the bottom the layout could go right at the top. It wouldn't matter because we've already predefined the whole order of the layers at the very top. And it's only the first definition of the layers that matter when it comes to order. So let me do an example. I'm going to say at layer, and then we'll do this in order. We'll say reset, and then we'll say theme, and then we'll say layout. And then what was the next one? I think it was content, then components, then utility. So content, components, and utility. So now we've kind of defined all of our different layers, right? And we've defined the order of them. So this is the least priority would be at the top and then defined at the end is the highest priority. So now it wouldn't matter the order of these things right here. So let me, for example, grab the components one right here. And we saw when we moved this to the top in the browser, it broke some of the button styles. So let me just move it right to the top up here to test this out. So if I save this, what do you think is going to happen? Do you think it's going to break the button styles again? Well, no, it shouldn't because like I said, we've predefined the order of the layers now. And we know that components is near the end. So even though we're using it at the top right here above the rest of the layers, because we've already defined the order of the layers, it doesn't matter. It's only the initial definition of the layers inside the style sheet that matters. And also because we've defined all these layers at the very top of the style sheet now, it's easy to see what layers are inside the style sheet and what order those layers are in. It's also easy to add new layers in if we wanted to in the position we want to add them in. So it makes things much easier to kind of manage in the future. And we can see now in the browser, nothing is broken. Everything looks as it should because we had the order defined up here. Even though the components are at the top, it doesn't matter. We've said the components are next to the end over here, so they have a higher priority and everything's working. Awesome.